Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. We finally digging in on the C20 next to me here. We're gonna kick her off with a C notch kit because I gotta have the rear end back in her so I can measure for the new drive shaft and transmission cross member. So I'll show you how I pop these in. This is a irreversible bad idea. <laughs> Let's get started. Well, here's the kit here. She came from CPP and I mean it, they sprinkle you with everything. Of course, the actual C-notch plate, which is more of an upside down U, but whatever. And then you get the <whistles> bolts, hardware there, the doohickey plates, and then you get new saddles for the axle to ride in. And then of course, bump stops. And I think they intend you to trim these because if you put that in, you're not really, you know, I'm going to snip her off up there, I think. So all of this comes together. I can't remember how much I paid for it because it was 84 years ago, but I remember thinking this is really reasonable. Um, never used one of these, so I'm kind of hoping it's 42% decent. I guess we'll find out. Guy went ahead and already made this. Just some basic cardboard, and you can see that fits on there like that. And this is going to be my cutting template. So when I put this on the frame, this is the notch I need to cut so this could slide right in. And if you're not familiar with how one of these here doohickeys works, I guess I could show on that really quick before we dig in. Here's the guy's current situation back here. and You can see very typical, got your U-bolts and then your bump stop up here on the, the old frame rail. The problem is you start putting lowering leafs in here your distance between here and your axle. I mean, they get it gets down there. It's significant. This one's dangling too, so normally this is even up farther. And pretty much the concept here is you take these here bracketry and you cut out that chunk right here. And now that axle, she's going to travel all the way up into there. And then we take the axle instead of being on the bottom of the spring there she's gonna lay up here you just bring her up top and then your u-bolts snag down over that and squish her together I'm probably once I get the old pinion angles set up right I'm probably gonna tack weld my axle tube to this bracketry because I do intend on uh, pulling a little bit and I don't want that axle wrapping around and messing up the old pinion angle because basically burnouts. Well, I reckon the first thing a guy wants to do is get this here axle just, you know, we got to get her out of the way. And I already got the emergency brake later cables unhooked and the optional rear brake line. So I think I just got to snip the old U-bolts off and let it smash onto the concrete here and then we'll, you know, we'll just hook a chain on it and drag it out of here. Then a guy can get in there and, you know, we got some room to work and stuff like that. But I should uh, take some measurements and kind of line up where we want these brackets to go while the axle's in here. But I have a pretty simple theory I'm going to show you that might save you, well, maybe at least four minutes. Five tops. Some fellers just panic in here and they got plumb bobs and T-squares and angle finders and math written all down the frame rails trying to get this ready for cutting. And for me, I just, I like to, you know, just let's bring her down to basics here, fellers. You got to make it easy. Basic lever and a hinge point. And we know the leaf spring isn't going to change in distance. Therefore, that is always going to stay center. And that center is right in the center of the axle tube. So being that point is never going to change, and that is where the factory put the bump stop, there's zero reason to believe that cutting exactly above the existing bump stop wouldn't be correct. 
I see people trying to move it around because they think putting the axle on top of the spring that the travel is going to be different, but it's not. Because again, your lever and your hinge stays the same. So I'm just gonna fire it out right there and that axle should just tuck right up in that spot. And I ain't gotta worry about it. Like I was saying, I already got the brake later cable off, optional rear brakes unhooked. I think I just gotta snip that bracket off, cut the vent tube, fire off these U-bolts, and then, you know, we'll just smash her on the ground and get her out of here. I gotta put gears in that for the old highway. So I gotta pick that up. I'm thinking 352, not sure. And then the old gyps up there. This can come out and that can come out and I can clean up some of this stuff. Oh, this is gonna be a long day. Okay, if I put this on world twister mode, should snag these right out. Yep, yeah. That's a, that's a titch loud, doesn't matter. Plus, where's it even coming from? Right there. It's definitely right there. Okay. Oh, great. I've got one of 94 done. That's <coughs> fine. You just power through it. really easy. So I'm thinking if a guy takes the other U-bolts off she's gonna get a little wobbly on that jack and there's about a 98.37 percent chance that you know it's gonna fall and crush stuff. So I'm gonna do nothing for safety but what I will do is lower this side down into this coaster here so the guy can move around easier. Here we go. Easy. Faster but easier. Easy. Slow her down. Slow. There we go. Oh, yep, right there. A little bit more. There. Now, kind of set the same thing up on the other side, and then if and after a guy can just wheel her out of here. Yep. Oh, thought that was solid. Guess not. Here we go now. Oh, we're on setting one. Bring her up to World Twister. Here we go now. They're just fighting. I know what I'm gonna do. I gotta get some liquid wrench on there. Help me, help. There we go. You can cook some eggs on that and I ain't kidding you. Why am I doing this? What's going on with this thing? It's all bent. Oh, there's the factory plate holder. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh. Guess I guy probably could have been soaking these down for the last year that the truck's been in here, but that'd make too much sense. Well, Get a breaker bar, I suppose. Huh? Got that nut off. That seems to be working just fine. Now I'll just ease this side down in here and we should be able to just... Hey, how come you're not coming down? Yeah, she's hung up in here, but I think a bump with the Tanya Harding here should bring her down. There she goes. 
just like that. And get these all the way. That one, by the way, that I just torched off, she was hot. I ain't kidding you. All right, what do we got now? Jack stuck in there, probably. Great. Come back, then. Come back. Come back. Now you go. Come on, now. Let's go. Well, the old 14 bolt, she's out. Overall, pretty decent shape, actually. When I saw this, looks like junkyard riding. 79, maybe? I don't know, what's that look like to you? And the truck is a 74, so if that's the case, she's been replaced on, which is fine with me. I'm gonna send this over to Harman Transmission and they are going to do a posi and a different gear for me. For the old highway speed and I think while she's out I'll just at least you know peek at the brakes I didn't say fix them just peek at them and then paint her up and, and then we'll shoot her back in when we're ready but for now I'm just gonna tuck her off to the side and finish the C notch <laughs> snag out the rest of these music pipe laters here because they're going right in the way the guy just doesn't have any room that rust is nice right in his face get get out of there ah. Ah. wow I just can't believe this come on well, I guess I gotta go get a punch. It's always something. 18 months later, I'm back. Here we go now. Well, I guess she's down. Am I done yet? Nope. Not even close. Great. Well, be real out a little bit. Be real up. Be real up. I guess that means fast forward. Whatever. Anyway, I got the music pipe laters out, both sides. And then a guy took a whirly woo, the good kind that's sticking your cheek and smoothed up the frame over here. Cause it just, you can't breathe and you know, there's dirt, you can't, you can't see nothing. So I got that out of the way. And then the guy was getting the anxiety disease really bad. So I went ahead and real quick, just finished off the other side minus the quick part. So I'll hook your peepers into that so you can kind of see what we're aiming for here. Here we go. You gotta get some room. Now I got like 35 non-American cubes in here, so that's better. And then see that frame, she's, that's, she's factory. We're gonna snip it out here in a second. But this way I can draw on it better and then when we get to welding that'll be more gooder. Oh, I just blew out the left kneecap. This. Anyway, I'm gonna hobble over here and hook your eye sockets into this side. <clears throat> this is, I mean, that's it. There's basically, you know, you get a C and it's notched into the frame over here. And I mean, that's it. That's kind of what we're going for. And I didn't trust the Yang Tao Hope They Hold hardware. These three bolts on each side, they're grade fives. So I zzz, 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 all the way around this thing, you know, outside and inside. And I trust that a little bit better and then I just hit her with some tss, 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 low gloss there. And I'll eventually do the whole frame because the front, if you remember, already looks kind of like that color there. So that should, you know, that's, this is, that's it. And that's what we're going for. Now I just got to do this and kind of duplicate her on the other side, which 
I mean, it's that's not gonna. I mean, we'll it'll get close to this is what we're going for. Get in here and look. And basically, I'm just you know, I'm just kind of eyeballing her, and then you know, just around it. And then I stare at it a little bit, and then I'll you know drink a cold snack, and then I'll eventually just get the brass to dig into her. So I'm gonna do that quick here. I don't know, something like that. I got some bracketry going on here, which is a, for some reason, a 17 pound piece of iron that hangs down just to hold the brake line, which seems excessive, but I'm gonna kind of hang on to her, mainly because I'm lazy and I don't want to recreate one. So I think this cut, we want to kind of leave her right about there and if we're going to pretend that that center, you know, somewhere close like that, accurately, then that's about it because that's a double joiner. This is a single joiner, and she's going to come this way up into this feller. So, I don't know. That looks pretty good. Something right about there. So, I'm going to get in here. This. Yeah. Yep, yep, mm hmm bring her around, get her up here, yeah, all the way up top like that, bring it down, there we go. So, this part right here is the section that we got to zip out, and using my finger meter, I mean, we're, this is, the bracketry is like, kind of like this, for the old, brake line hanging later. So this should work and then you know the bolts they go about like that. Now I gotta really do something. Dang it. Well there's the inside of the other side and on this side the guy has to be careful because up here there's a fastener that hooks onto your optional rear brake line so you gotta take that out and then just ease out the line back over like that. Make sure you can't get behind here so it's really hard to get to. And that way when the flames come through that doesn't light on fire. This, I don't really care about, we'll let that burn. Well let me tell you a thing or two about a thing or six. What I did learn on the other side is I can't use the lightning scissor on the whole thing. I've got one 20 amp breaker that runs this entire shop and I mean everything. So all my battery chargers and drill chargers and phone chargers and radio and lights and the plasma itself and I mean everything. So after I went through about $648 in 20 amp fuses and popped a breaker in the house 93 times, I came up with a different plan which was We'll take the gas axe and do the majority of the work and then we'll come back with the lightning scissor and just, you know, do the precision outlining and whatnot. And I'll do the same with the bolt holes once I get the other bracketry in here. I'll blast the hole through the frame with the gas axe and I'll come back and little, 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 little out the actual hole. And then I only got to go through 42 fuses instead of 116. You know, you gotta save money where you can. So I think I'm gonna stare at it a couple more minutes. And then, uh, no I'm not. We're just gonna nail it with the torch. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you.
for the girls we date. Finger got a little hot there. Got my large Tanya Harding here. I'm just gonna persuade on it a little bit. <sighs> yep. Okay. Well, there we go. I'm gonna just test fit the piece and clean it up where I need to, to where she sits all the way up and kind of hits the marks there. Test fitalization. Oh, test fit sounds weird. I think we'll go with just try her out. Yeah, see if we got her. We got to bring her wider. We got to get her out. Get her open. That's good. But the bottom, she needs. We get. We need a tickle of work in here. How much? Not much. I don't think it's torch worthy. Actually, the old. The grinder would just bring that around enough for a guy. Ah! <sighs> oh, battery down. That's hotter than a two dollar pistol. Anyway, took the grinder and just, you know, took a skull shout here around, cleaned her up. And now she, she goes right in, just like that. And then I drew some circles through the other circles. You know, that's where the bolts go, you know. And now I'll take the torch and just blow some holes through here and just kind of keep testing on them with the bolts, make sure they can snip through. Then I'll take some psst and psst, 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 around here. So, you know, this truck, she's, you don't want her to rust. You know, that's the last thing we need on this girl. She's, it's too good for that. Okay. That was too loud. Look out. Well, I suppose now a guy should go get a bolt and see if they through these holes here. And if all the bolts fit, then we'll throw the bracket tree up and make sure they fit again after they fitted the first time. Is fitted the word? Probably not. It's fine. Guy's gonna do one final test fit, and then we'll tighten these bolts down. And now we'll get out the Zeus machine. And, you know, we'll lay down some zzz, zzz, and that'll hold her in place. Oh, she's flush here and here. Good enough. I mean, it's just your frame. You know, you gotta, you just, you gotta overlook the small things and move on. I'm getting hungry. Get on there. Whoop, whoop, easy now. Breaking laser clamp is in the way. Dang it! Uh, I feel like I might be cutting something off again. You know what I mean? What do you want from me? You just, you gotta go in here. This is where you belong. How much torque? Just put it on the all of it mode. Run your eye down it. Yeah. Just make sure she's, yeah, it's in there. You know, it's, it's on the thing. That's good enough. <laughs> it's fine, just keep going. Well, I mean, that's a pretty easy process. I can't, I just can't reach nothing. What do I got going on here? Well, I can't have nothing nice I mean, it's, it is what it is. I gotta tell you something though. This welder sure makes me a better welder and I'm not a good welder. Yeah! Okay. 
My favorite part is when you get down here and then it just falls in your face. Burn my mustache off. Ouch! All right, I'm gonna shoot behind and I gotta bring the lights down. I gotta turn the heat, you know, I gotta get her. Gotta get her all the way up. I got some gap welding to do and then you just gotta get her on the frame, you know, so. I need all of the voltages. Man, this battery lights ain't so bad. Oh, yeah, I can't bring it. Oh, it's fine. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh. Ouch. I just don't fit. Okay, what have we got? What am I looking at? I just, I can't see in here. That's the problem. That's what I got right now. Oh, I see. All right, I just gotta get up here. Gotta get up on that. Got brake lines in my earlobe. I don't got a desirable ground. I just got sick of her, so I shut her down and came back today and, you know, I cleaned up a little bit and um, wired brushed the piss out of this, cleaned her up a little bit and, uh, you know, booger welds, but whatever, they work. They don't look too baddish in the daylight. And now we just got a and then this will be done. I think that's pretty much it. And then the final step is I'm gonna mount some tires on this guy and then we'll grab the Ford. She's sitting over there. And we'll bite onto this and uh, plop her into beats over there. And drop this off at Harmon Transmission. They're gonna rebuild this for me and I think Thinking 352s. I don't know yet. We're gonna run around the old calculator, and I'm gonna powder coat this as well, black. And I'll see if I can twist his arm and maybe put some new brake lines and everything on it while he's got her down. That way, a guy could just bring her back, and we'll just, you know, snip it in, and then we're just done with the rear. The other thing I got to do is the drive shaft, the carrier bearing, right about there, she shot. So that needs to be resolved as well at some point. But I'm just, I'm kind of over crawling around under these things today, so, you know, that can wait. We'll procrastinate. Yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, that looks not good. Keep going. She's just not mixolating right. Let's try this one. She's brand new. Oh, that's better. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let her eat. Get her up into here. Yeah, down there. Probably not as important, but, you know. Just gotta get her off the ground and I'm gonna spray this tire on. Then I think I got another one. Put her on this side. And my rear end guy, he takes his post lift and hooks on the wheels and lifts her up, and that way the pumpkin's right in the guy's teeth. Pretty smart actually, and that's how he does rear end. So I'm trying to put him on wheels for him so he can snip it around and snag it and whatnot. And I just put these on. This is actually the whole reason I bought this tractor with the loader. It's so I can lift junk like this around and got other engines and stuff. Pretty handy. The plan if I had one would be beep her out, go up here and just dump her in the back. And you know, 
hope she rides. guy's got no brakes, of course. You gotta use the old engine as a brake. That's the right thing to do. Yep. <clears throat> idea how we're getting that out but I don't know we'll figure it out but see notch is done got to get that rear end finished and then we can come back in here and throw that on top of the springs and I gotta drop the front of these springs anyway so guy might just take these all the way out and clean them up a little bit you know it looks like this is starting to dry finally so I can another coat on that but C notches are done. Thank goodness. As a reminder, we're taking this on the power tour. We're going to have a lot of build videos coming out, so hit that subscribe button. It's important. This C notch, that was just the tip of the old iceberg. We've got driveline to figure out, cross member, gear vendors overdrive. We've got a bigger racing LS engine. Some Holly goodies that they're either not out or they, they just came out. Terminator X to figure out. That's, you know. Digital gauges, custom interior. The only thing that's not changing is the old paint here because, you know, that's, she's factory. We're going to leave that. But if you want to come see us on Power Tour, great opportunity. And we're going to be going with the Boss Garage, Junkyard Digs, Dylan McCool, uh, Classic Mustang Sport 29, Thunderhead 289. The whole gang's going to be out there, so check those guys out too. They're thrashing away in their builds, but it should be a lot of fun. Anywho, see you next time. Thank you.